let maybe concentrate for now for a different aspect of it because uh, we were talking about uh, uh, efficiency about uh, technology now about IT but what about uh, what about the finance behind it or what about the economy and for that I have uh, the special guest uh, uh, for uh, to, to describe uh, Mr. Komanda, who is the chief uh, economic in Trinity Bank, uh, and I'm happy to learn uh, the finance behind electromobility and how does it work and what we could expect. So Good please. afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, for this session, and uh, I will uh, today uh, speak about uh, the future of electromobility in Europe, of course, about uh, its uh, financials and about the uh, outlook uh, of uh, this sector. And uh, I will ask specifically if uh, we in Europe are prepared for another China shock, because of course uh, China is a key player in electromobility and uh, is very strong and still stronger. Uh, and is getting getting even stronger than last year or uh, two years ago. So it's a shock again already now, I would say, because, uh, for example, uh, this September, uh, an auto show in Munich, Germany, w was really a shock for uh, many experts from the car industry in Europe because uh, Chinese automakers presented a really good, uh, efficient and quite cheap uh, cars, electric cars uh, that uh, pose a threat for uh, European car industry and especially the electric car industry in Europe, uh, which uh, it seems now is lagging behind the Chinese one. Uh, so this is a real problem, not just for uh, automotive in Europe, but uh, for whole uh, European economy. So let's have a closer look on this issue. Uh, this is how uh, Chinese, uh, as they call it, uh, new, uh, new energy vehicles uh, industry, this is the NEV, uh, is uh, now uh, growing. Uh, we've seen uh, a huge growth race, especially since 2021. Uh, this is uh, this uh, uh, picture uh, shows uh, an EV, especially the electric cars in China and the growth of its sales in the country. So we see a big uh, increase of sales, uh, battery electric cars, BEV and plug-in hybrid cars, uh, and um, the trajectory is uh, clear. Uh, so even though that China economy already now is not uh, in good shape because of still uh, some implications of COVID-19 pandemic, which was very uh, difficult for China because of many restrictions, quite strict restrictions uh, it uh, has led to. Uh, now, even this gloom of Chinese economy, there is a boom of uh, electric car industry in that country. And it's helped partly by falling battery prices and lithium carbonate prices, which is the main component uh, for uh, batteries uh, for electric cars, electric vehicles. Uh, we see here in this uh, picture that uh, there is a decline in prices and uh, there was an increase in prices of these materials and batteries because of, again, COVID-19 uh, situation uh, and uh, it was only interim increase because of, uh, you know, restrictions uh, related to the pandemic and the fact that uh, many, uh, many companies closed down its production and uh, because of, uh, of course, reasons like uh, restrictions, pandemic and so on, uh, there was a decline in production and because of that uh, also an increase in prices. But uh, since uh, the beginning of this year, uh, Chinese authori authorities uh, 
went totally different way and now the economy is open again no restrictions at all no covid restrictions at all uh, and uh, we see uh, again an increase of production even these batteries even lithium carbonates and because of it uh, the price is going down which is helping all the car industry in china all the uh, new energy car industry uh, especially and uh, another factor which is very important is that uh, china market is more developed concerning uh, cars electric cars than other major markets in the world we've seen this uh, many times but uh, again uh, now the proportion or share of uh, electric cars in uh, china in its automotive market is uh, higher than in other uh, very important uh, global markets uh, U us united states and europe as well so these two markets are with uh, lesser share of uh, electric cars vehicles and its sales than the china one and china uh, was able already in 2012 uh, put together um, its strategy how uh, to develop uh, electric car industry and uh, in this regard uh, it may uh, china is able uh, to really uh, uh, really get advantages from a plant economy uh, of course uh, Chinese economy is more plant uh, than uh, US one or European Union one uh, these are more pro-market economies but in this regard and uh, especially in the field of uh, uh, electric car vehicles uh, now it seems that the planning of China government uh, was quite efficient and because of that it has led to this uh, bigger share of electric cars and uh, they are able uh, really uh, to uh, uh, fulfill demand of Chinese um, consumers and not just Chinese because as I already mentioned the auto show in Germany this was really a major point it was a shock for uh, for uh, automakers in Europe uh, because uh, it is clear now that uh, Chinese companies are able to produce uh, quite cheap cars uh, and very efficient and they are really uh, in very good comp position for competition with uh, American cars especially Tesla's and uh, European one like Volkswagen and BMW here uh, in this picture uh, we see uh, top five of uh, uh, brands or models of electric cars uh, according to sales in European markets so uh, of course Tesla is the first uh, its uh, cars are really best-selling uh, in uh, Europe and then we may see quite stable or uh, declining uh, declining development of uh, other European and American companies and the pink curve uh, it's MG4 MG4 is a Chinese brand uh, MG is a very old uh, originally British company uh, Morris Garages in, was established in uh, 1924 but now it's part of a big state China company corporation automotive uh, producer called SAEC uh, sorry SAIC uh, um, and this is state owned uh, automaker in China and uh, it bought this British originally British uh, brand MG and uh, we may see that uh, this year is quite successful uh, for its model MG4 this electric uh, car uh, model of electric car is in the top five of uh, best-selling European models and uh, there is strong growth uh, compared to other models uh, uh, with the exception of uh, the Tesla Model Y.
So this is really another warning for European car industry that really Chinese are uh, moving to Europe and uh, they are able to be successful in European market, which is totally different paradigm that uh, just two or three or four years ago when uh, the challenge it seemed at that time was that uh, how successful will European companies will be in China uh, and how many cars they uh, will or they would be able to sold there and um, the question was to what extent uh, will or, or how how high its market share will would get in Chinese market. But now, uh, just two or three years later, the question is quite different. Now, it, the question is uh, if really we in Europe are able or are prepared to uh, face uh, the threat of a uh, huge inflow of Chinese cars uh, to the European markets and uh, this picture again shows that uh, really this is all the threat that is already uh, present and uh, now European automakers and politicians do not have any clear answer to it. Still uh, it may be uh, it may be this this picture is quite different um, from the previous one because it really shows uh, the big picture and uh, still uh, the Chinese share on European markets is quite small. Uh, this is a uh, share of uh, uh, electric car sales in European markets according to uh, uh, automakers origin so Chinese uh, portion is still quite uh, tiny. This is the pink uh, part of uh, the picture uh, compared to European automakers, US automakers. Uh, here we see that uh, the situation is not catastrophic, but it may be one day, but still it's not, it's not catastrophic. So we have time uh, to uh, tackle the Chinese competition, uh, but uh, we have to do some things to be successful in this regard. So what to do uh, to cope with uh, Chinese uh, automakers? Uh, uh, I think uh, the first is uh, not to be too demanding um, on European companies, automakers, uh, concerning how are they able to fight climate changes? Because um, climate again, climate agenda is uh, very costly uh, for them to tackle. And uh, European plans like Fit for Fifty Five or or mm, Carbon neutrality 2050 are very ambitious. They are more ambitious than uh, similar plans anywhere else in the world. For example, in China, in Asia, in the United States. And uh, because of these plans, automakers in Europe are in huge disadvantage uh, in their competition with uh, other automakers from different parts of the world. And I think this is really a big part of this problem. Uh, and of course, there is another part of the problem. And that the fact that uh, Chinese companies are subsidized by Chinese government, uh, the structure of Chinese economy is quite different uh, from the structure of European economy or US economy, of course, because of, as I mentioned already, centrally planned uh, nature of uh, Chinese economy provides 
uh, its regime, Beijing regimes, with uh, incentives to promote some industries. Uh, they are uh, they are favoring and uh, electric car ve vehicles and um, electric cars in general are really one of the key uh, sector that Beijing, uh, its regime, the government of China, want to promote uh, and uh, support by large subsidies. So uh, now there is question in European Union to what extent we should, uh, we should fight uh, this uh, competitive advantage uh, of uh, Chinese automakers. On one hand, uh, of course, uh, we should be open economies, uh, promoting global trade with no barriers uh, or some small barriers, no tariffs and so on. On the other hand, when this situation uh, is taken advantage of by Chinese importing uh, to Europe very cheap cars, uh, cheap uh, to a large extent because of subsidies of the Chinese government, I think it's not a symmetric competition, uh, definitely not. So uh, we uh, hear this alarm. Uh, I have shown this in my pictures here. This is alarm and this is warning. And this graph shows that still we have time uh, to cope with inflow of chi Chinese uh, cars. They are cheaper and very often uh, they are of a higher quality compared to the price or related to the price. So. Uh, we have now uh, two ways how to tackle the problem and I think uh, the first is uh, and how to tackle the China shock. Uh, the first is uh, to make uh, our climate goals in Europe uh, more pragmatic. It uh, should be more aligned with the similar goals in different parts of the world, especially in China. We should level the playing field in this regard. Now, uh, because we are more ambitious than China, we are in a huge uh, disadvantage in competition with it. And second is, uh, I think, to somehow consider uh, measures how to regulate inflow of Chinese cars uh, in Europe, uh, for example, through some uh, car, some kind of tariffs, and these tariffs should be really addressed uh, not to damage global trade, but just to compensate for uh, the advantage uh, of uh, of subsidies of Chinese government, uh, they are uh, related to Chinese automakers. So these two steps, I think, uh, will uh, buy some time uh, for European automakers. And uh, with the regulation uh, of the car industry, which would be another third step, I would prefer to see uh, we still uh, may uh, get uh, back to when to where we were just two or three years ago so uh, we may face quite successfully uh, china competition even though i do not expect uh, europe will any time in the future so strong in uh, electric car industry like it has been in uh, classical combustion uh, engine car industry. These times are over. What we may do now at maximum is to control the damage done already by uh, Chinese who are uh, really more efficient in promoting its uh, electric car industry. So now it's not about uh, European automakers expanding to China in huge numbers. Now it's about 
to damage control and uh, trying to prevent Chinese companies to expand expand to Europe to this extent that would be really uh, damaging for not just European automakers but for the whole European economy. This is the question of today. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you very much for a great presentation. Uh, you have several questions here. I can maybe start with a relatively direct one. Uh, uh, you uh, tell that there is this Chinese uh, very cheap cars entering European market. Uh, what is the direct substitute of that car? Of, of which car, which is electric one, is mostly violated by that? Uh, it, it is Tesla, or I mean, it's a different car that normally their sales going down because of the sales of the Chinese are going up or it cannot uh, be like identified this way it's i think we have look at the situation in the big picture so for example uh just one month ago or so uh, volkswagen the german automaker decided not to build uh, its uh, uh, its plant for batteries here in the Czech Republic, in uh, Plzeň Línie, even though that uh, our government, Czech government, prepared uh, prepared uh, good location uh, for it, uh, uh, army airport, so great infrastructure there, and even though Volkswagen turned down uh, the offer, uh, and uh, the explanation is that uh, there is very low demand uh, for batteries, uh, for auto, for cars, for electric cars in Europe right now. And the thing is partly that there is this inflow of and the threat of uh, Chinese automakers and American automakers, especially Tesla, who are really uh, much uh, more successful um, in terms of uh, price and in terms of quality of the cars. Uh, so uh, we feel it here in the Czech Republic already and all European automakers, but especially the big one like Volkswagen, BW, uh, BMW uh, and others are really uh, suffering most from this development. Maybe that, that, that uh, like makes me another question because, uh, you know, the people were talking a lot that the one of the problem of Europe is the somehow secure the Wu production line of the car. So, okay, if you want to build uh, batteries, but you need some com components to batteries, you, you, you need whatever materials to make it, etc. Uh, uh, how, what are the problems in this, uh, in this area? This an that's another advantage, and a huge advantage for China, I'm afraid, because uh, you need uh, to have uh, some really specific materials when you are building electric cars. And that's the reason why I am calling for uh, for European politicians not to be too harsh on classic automotive with combustion steel, because this is really a... Uh, in this sphere, in this sector, combustion steel, combustion engine, store, sorry, Europe uh, is really uh, the global leader but it's not the case with electric cars. Uh, and uh, electric cars need, uh, for example, rare, uh, rare earths metals, and China is a big producer of these metals. So once uh, we are promoting uh, cars, electric cars in Europe, for example, by subsidies to firms of households even, we are promoting China economy. We are uh, going into bigger debt here in Europe because of subsidies, and we are subsidizing at least uh, from at least partly um, Chinese production because we are dependent to a large extent on this rare earth from China when we are producing our electric cars. For example, you need, as I showed uh, in my pictures, you need lithium. Uh, and you need some cobalts and rare earth materials and uh, China is major uh, or even uh, the biggest producer of many of them. Uh, so I think this is another issue that the that, uh, uh, electric car industry is more, more 
uh, dependent on China than uh, classical combustion engine car industry. Uh, it seems to be a paradox to me uh, that China on one hand could help really to, to boost the electromobility in Europe. That's uh, something that we are calling for. Uh, on the other hand, it could really ruin and destroy uh, the part of very important industry, especially in several countries, Czech Republic being one of them. So th this is really a kind of uh, a strange story. Uh, what I mean by this is uh, that uh, that there, uh, it's not a question whether we want to go green or not, uh, because this is the question of uh, having a stable industry in, in Czech Republic, actually. So uh, I think th this is getting the kind of uh, the question of immobility to a different level for me, because I, I think this is this is really a threat. I'm not sure whether it's already not too late, actually. Uh, the Volkswagen is not really, uh, for me personally, the, the fastest one on the market with the electric cars, uh, and Škoda is somehow uh, lacking the, the momentum with it. Uh, there is a one question uh, that actually uh, I had uh, pretty much the similar one prepared uh, for you as well. Uh, how will the governments react uh, on the fact that uh, the governments, the states are usually very dependent on the taxes uh, of, of the crude oil or the petrol. Uh, th this is going to be changed. Uh, there will be even people, or are even people now, uh, able to actually charge their cars uh, at home. Uh, logically, as we know how governments work, uh, it means that there will be some new taxes uh, or the price of the charging uh, will be actually somehow uh, taxed to, to, to be on the level of the petrol. Now, uh, what is your opinion on that? Uh, how, how the governments actually uh, will behave? Because th this could be also a contradictory measure to uh, the EV adoption at the end. So uh, it is a ver very interesting topic for me. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, question and very important question. Uh, you are right uh, that currently uh, a huge portion of uh, government income is from taxes on uh, petrol or diesel uh, and these fuels. Uh, but uh, um, regarding electricity, uh, there is no such tax or some small tax. And uh, now government, uh, and not just Czech government, but uh, governments all around Europe are promoting uh, electric cars. And once uh, there is uh, some critical share of uh, cars in the market, uh, of course, there will be quite significant decline of uh, the government income from the taxes from fuels like uh, petrol or diesel. So um, I think we need to account for this already now uh, when we, for example, plan to buy as a household or as a company, when we plan to uh, buy a car, or to uh, uh, change our infrastructure for electric cars, uh, we need to uh, cope with this issue because uh, uh, the costs related uh, to electric cars will increase, will increase hugely in coming years because of introduction of some uh, kind of tax, uh, of course, to compensate for declining uh, government income from uh, lower uh, petrol or diesel taxes. So there will be increase of uh, taxation in electric cars. And another fact is that, uh, as we already see now, uh, the prices of electricity, and now it's a big debate in Czech Republic about uh, a regulated part of uh, mm -hmm. electricity price for a year 2024, and it's, it's just beginning. So in the coming years and for coming years, every year, we will see a quite steep increase of electricity prices, especially of its uh, regulated part. So it's another source 
of uh, potential problems for uh, electric car industry in Europe because again uh, China car industry uh, is helping by well low electricity prices there which is not the case in Europe uh, we have much um, higher electricity prices uh, than uh, Chinese and uh, key is uh, that uh, China electricity is uh, produced uh, quite often from uh, coal. Yep. So it's not clear. It's uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, environmentally friendly, um, and this is really another problem for electric car industry. And uh, it's not so advantageous to be an electric car uh, like uh, many. Na many politicians, for example, in Europe uh, are claiming right now, because once you incorporate, uh, for example, the future high techs uh, in uh, overall accounting for uh, electric cars, uh, many people would still prefer the classical one with the combustion engine, because now uh, it may be advantageous uh, purely from the point of view if, of how costly is uh, to to drive the car from a point B or from the point A to point B. Once the prices of um, petrol or or diesel are over 40 crowns per liter in Czech Republic, really then it may be cheaper uh, to go uh, with electric cars. Uh, but it's just because there is no tax. Once we have tax in in uh, incorporated in the electric uh, price cars electric cars price uh, it it's it, it will not be so advantageous and then you will need uh, prices over 50 or 55 per liter of petrol or diesel to uh, electric cars be still uh, be more advantageous from the point of view of how costly is to go from a to b uh, than today, so it's another very big problem for for electric car industry, uh, and uh, many politicians, I think, are underestimating or this uh, of this, and uh, many 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 drivers, many people, many households, I think, not, and that's the reason why the demand for electric cars is still so low because in Europe, because for a majority of households, it's it's still expensive, it's very expensive, and there is no clear uh, light at the end of the tunnel uh, because of this future taxation for example and so it's another factor that's hindering the demand the growth of demand for electric cars uh, in Europe yeah and the only winning party will be uh the China, actually, we are kind of committing a suicide, uh, I would say. Yeah, uh, uh, and I think your your dilemma you you mentioned before, I think, is uh, quite right because, uh, on one hand, we are subsidizing electric cars here in Europe, but we are uh, feeding the Chinese dragon by our subsidies. So we are going uh, deeper into debt, which will be paid off by future get generations of Europeans. Uh, but we are with this debt feeding the Chinese dragons and today we are enabling him to uh, really uh, be more stronger on the European market and even to damage uh, our uh, employment in Europe and uh, our own companies. So it's very important dilemma and we have only little time to cope with it. Uh, I think Thank you very much for, for the answers. I think this, this is a, uh, probably for a separate debate <laughs> also with other people. I think that, that would be really interesting uh, debate that we could probably even uh, facilitate somehow on the university field. Um, it would be good to, to have uh, the ending of the conference somehow more positively. But, but I think the important message that, that I really like to give also to the audience is that uh, surprisingly, in Europe, and especially in the countries where, where the car manufacturing is quite important part of the industry, it's not just about being greener, but actually it is really about a uh, sustainable kind of industry that, that we need. So uh, I, I would like really people to understand also that, because uh, probably it's even more important 
uh, oh, that probably I, I'll be hated on yeah. the social networks for that. But from my perspective, it's it's really more important to survive. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can really afford the luxury. Uh, I think you are completely right. Uh, I think we still uh, we are still lacking the big picture. Uh, what's the share of uh, overall or all or whole road traffic in Europe on global CO2 emissions? It's just one percent. So even if we in one day or over one nine night uh, completely shift our road traffic from combustion engines to electric vehicles, the decline of global emissions of CO2 will be just 1%. It's so small change that uh, this small change cannot even slow down a bit the process of uh, the uh, change in, of the climate. So uh, we need uh, really cooperation on the global scale <coughs> with uh, especially Chinese part and Americans and India. These countries are the biggest uh, uh, producers of emissions of CO2. It's not Europe. So these countries, um, uh, I think, have major responsibility for for. Um, uh, going down with their emissions. And it's not that we uh, shouldn't go more greener in Europe. Of course we should. Uh, but the problem is the pace of this uh, move. And uh, I think now we are too ambitious in my eyes. And we are too fast. And we are too fast we, that the speed of the change is so fast that we may get one day sustainability in terms of uh, environment, but we will lose sustainability in terms of social impact. And we already see now the polarization of, uh, for example, um, European politics, uh, now uh, populist, uh, populist party uh, won the elections in Netherlands, uh, uh, alternative für Deutschland is the second uh, second largest or second uh, most preferred party in Germany, which is really a change of all after the Second World War, well, uh, Second World War uh, paradigm in Germany. So there are clear signs that uh, we are lacking or we are losing. We are losing, not lacking. We are losing. Uh, the social sustainability in Europe because it's it's too expensive um, and too dramatic for for uh, European households to cope with so many problems at once. High energy prices, move to uh, electric vehicles, losing uh, jobs, or because of uh, because of our old industry, the industrialization, potentially the industrialization of, for example, German economy because of its losing against China one and so on and so on. So many challenging challenges are um, in front of us that I'm afraid uh, we should somehow uh, uh, reconsider uh, our green ambitions, not to not to put them uh, completely out of our sight, but uh, just to reconsider them. I think we can't. This is my personal opinion. I think we can't afford it. I think we need to produce uh, the EV cars, otherwise the China will swallow us. So it's it's a different reason why to do so. But I think we should produce them. Uh, on the other hand, in the future, I think it's going to be really environmentally friendly after the batteries, uh, yeah. re recycling mm -hmm. uh, procedures. There is, there is a good hope that... Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's a good way, it's a good technology. Everything is going to be a battery powered at the end. So, so uh, cars are no exception for me. The, the future is really electric now. It seems like we're living, we have been really living in the era of electricity. But so I think we, we should go for the technology. Yeah, we should be environmentally but we responsible. Need clean, clean electricity and not just in Europe. We, we need uh, clean electricity sure. in China. And then 
we need cheaper prices because now it's not affordable for majority of European households. And I think we someday we will be there. So someday it will be quite cheap and quite affordable even for average European to buy an electric car. But the process of the transformation and our way to get to this point I mentioned, uh, if we are too fast, uh, mm. it's too risky and China might, um, might get advantage uh, from this, from this, from our ambitions to be so quick that we will lose our social cohesion here in Europe. Okay, so uh, as you can see that we can make another conference out of <laughs> it, uh, probably about the economic impact. Uh, and that's what we always do to invite the guests uh, showing uh, very different perspectives on, uh, on the topic. So thank you very much for you. sharing uh, the, your ideas. Thank you very much for inviting me for this session. Thank you.